St. Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from two donors. The first is Frida Neves from Burnaby, British Columbia, in thanksgiving to God for the gift of a great-grandchild due in February and that it will be safe and healthy delivery, and for all her family and relatives. The second is an anonymous donor from Sarnia, Ontario, in Thanksgiving. Our thanks to our donors for this gift of the Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Incline a merciful ear to our cry, we pray, O Lord, and casting light on the darkness of our hearts, visit us with the grace of your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. Balaam looked up and saw Israel camping tribe by tribe. Then the Spirit of God came upon him, and he uttered his oracle, saying, The oracle of Balaam, son of Baal, the oracle of the man whose eye is clear, who sees the vision of the Almighty, the oracle of one who hears the words of God, who falls down but with eyes uncovered. How fair are your tents, O Jacob! Your encampments, O Israel! like palm groves that stretch far away, like gardens beside a river, like aloes that the Lord has planted, like cedar trees beside the waters. Water shall flow from his buckets, and his seed shall have abundant water. His king shall be higher than Agag, and his kingdom shall be exalted. Again, Balaam uttered his oracle, saying, The oracle of Balaam, son of Baor, the oracle of the man whose eye is clear, the oracle of one who hears the words of God and knows the knowledge of the Most High, who sees the vision of the Almighty, who falls down but with his eyes uncovered. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. The word of the Lord. Teach me your way. According to your steadfast love, remember me. 
for your goodness sake, O Lord. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. Teach me your ways, O Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, then he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. The Gospel of the Lord. When I was in grade school, we had an essay competition just before Christmas. The winners read their stories to the class. One girl spoke of how commercial Christmas had become, and offered a few slogans for possible use by advertisers. The one I still remember was, This Christmas, let Jesus light up your heart, and GE light up your tree. Well, the great Christmas machine that she spoke about then seems to have rolled on and gathered speed over the years. We don't often talk to our friends about how Jesus lights up our hearts. Instead, our conversations are about sagging Christmas sales, depressed holiday markets, seasonal slumps in production. The modern Christmas greeting is, what do you want for Christmas? Followed by the New Year's greeting, what did you get for Christmas? It seems that this season is just one great consumer orgy. With all this commercial fanfare, we can lose sight of the real meaning of Christ's birth and why he came to us. Now, I'm not going to repeat the story to you. You know it well enough. Instead, I'm going to tell you another Christmas story. While I was in the seminary, I volunteered at the Good Shepherd Refuge. I met a woman there named Irene, who lived with her son and daughter-in-law and their granddaughter. Her son and daughter-in-law were out of work, and all of them were trying to survive on Irene's pension. When there wasn't enough food for everyone at home, Irene would come to the refuge for her evening meal. She loved to talk to me about her family, especially her granddaughter, who was her hope for a better life. Just before Christmas, the refuge puts on a meal, a very special meal, and Irene was there with all of her family. 
She approached me excited because she wanted me to meet them and her granddaughter. I remember how proud she was as I knelt down to look into the face of that child. And what I saw there haunts me still. It was the face of a child severely brain damaged and undernourished. Although she was four or five years old, she could not walk or talk. The faces of her parents told me they knew their little girl was not well, that she would never be well. The joy and the hope that Irene saw in her seemed senseless to me. How could this child ever become her savior? Later that afternoon, after the dinners were served, I stayed downtown to finish my own Christmas shopping, but I could not get the face of that little girl out of my mind. Everything in the stores that I entered, the tinsel, the colored lights, the abundance of food and goods, all of it seemed false and unreal, because amongst all of this plenty, there was a child who was not just hungry, but starving. And there was nothing I could do to change her life. Nothing that I could buy that would save her. She will never hear the word of God as you and I hear it. She will never taste the bread of life. She will forever bear Christ's cross without ever having known his love. We would expect such a child to exist in a third world country, or one plagued by famine and drought. But to find a child starving here in this city, with all of its affluence and plenty, how is that possible? My friends, I tell you this story not to elicit pity for this small child or to make you feel guilty or ashamed. I tell it because it asks questions about Advent and how are we preparing to receive God among us. Is this season nothing more than a big merchandising event? Or is it a time to foster a deeper and wider love for others? Will we take time this Advent to let Christ guide our hearts? Or will we be overwhelmed by the frantic effort to buy and wrap and bake and decorate? We must choose what this time of year means to us because our choices affect the lives of others. Far from our own comfortable existence are those who, like the parents of that small child, wait in fear, numbness, and pain for God to show them his face and give them some real relief from their poverty. To help them, we must regain the meaning of Christmas. We must not allow our culture to define it as something that comes wrapped up in a box found under a plastic tree. Christmas is about an innocent child. God's gift of hope and peace to all who have the eyes and the ears to see him and hear him. If we understand the great gift that God is giving to us, then we will be moved to unselfish love for others. And when we are less concerned about an equal exchange of gifts and learn to give freely of ourselves to others, especially to those in need, then we will find the true joy of Christmas. The Messiah did not come to establish the biggest commercial sales opportunity of the year. The Messiah came for people, all people. That is why a small, undernourished child can reflect the true face of Christmas, for she calls forth from us to make life livable, to turn everything towards God myself and the small part of this world which is under my influence. God does not expect us to feed all of the hungry, but he does expect that life could be human enough so that every child could grow up and think about him and love him. 
if you are still looking for a way to experience Advent, a way that will prepare you for the joy of Christmas, it's not too late. Start looking at the faces of those people you meet on the buses and in the subway, in the crowded shopping malls, at the office parties, on the street. Look into those faces of those sleeping on street grates in the doorways of our city. Then ask yourself, what gifts will I put under the Christmas tree this year? Will it be love for the old, care for the weak, food for the poor? Somewhere an innocent child depends upon your answer. In this season of Advent, let us ask God to help us with his grace as we prepare to meet him at Christmas. That we may have the faith to follow the gospel and to prepare a place for the Messiah in our lives, we pray to the Lord. That God will be our guide and our strength as we try to renew the joy of Christmas in our own hearts, we pray to the Lord that firmly rooted in prayer, we will find the right gifts to give to our neighbor. We pray to the Lord. Lord, That a spirit of thankfulness and joy may be manifest in the lives of those in our television community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Almighty Father, in our hectic preparations for Christmas, may we renew our faith in the coming of your Son who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, bless the city of Israel, you have humble, contrite hearts. Lord, bless me, my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope and so with angels and archangels with thrones and dominions 
and with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Would those of you at home join with me now in this prayer to the Holy Spirit? Descend, Holy Spirit of life. Come down into our hearts that we may live. Descend into our emptiness that emptiness may be filled. Descend into the dust that dust may flower. Descend into the dark that the light may shine in darkness. Amen. Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and to hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Our thanks to our two donors for the gift of this Mass. If you'd like to sponsor a Mass or share in sponsoring a Mass, please call our office at 1-888-383-6277 for details. And light triumph.